Hi, welcome back to the Datasphere learning series. In today's session, we're going to focus on creating custom data products in Datasphere application. In this picture, you can see three different types of data products in Business Data Cloud. The first one is SAP data products, and the second one is BW generated data products, and the third one is custom data products that are directly generated in Datasphere. So we're going to talk about these three different types of data products at a very high level, and then we move on to creating a custom data product in Datasphere application as part of today's session. We're going to start with option one, that is SAP data product. As name suggested, it's managed by SAP. Once you activate the intelligent app or a corresponding data package provided by SAP, the data products are generated in and available as files in HANA Data Lake file storage of SAP. And then from there, corresponding analytic models also prepared are generated in Datasphere. And then reports also will be prepared in Analytics Cloud to consume by reporting users. And then the second use case, it is BW Private Cloud Edition, which is part of Business Data Cloud subscription process. And then you can generate the data products from BW objects like advanced data store objects or composite providers and etc. And once these data products are generated in object store of Datasphere, you can generate an analytical model in Datasphere and then further consume in Analytics Cloud. You can also call these our custom data products. To differentiate the other option of custom data products, I'm going to call these as BW generated data products. And the third option that we are going to talk about is custom data products, which are integrated from ECC and S4 on-premise systems. The data is in integrated and loaded into Datasphere application and, and as, as local tables. And then we can create data products inside the Datasphere using data sharing cockpit. And these data products are called custom data products. Whatever the option that you choose, they are all data products, and these data products can be shared in BDC cockpit using Delta share functionality. And so the external applications are also internal applications like data bricks can consume them and then prepare further modeling or data science in, in the respective applications. These data products can also be installed in a respective space in Datasphere, um, not only for Delta sharing, these can be installed and used for their data analytical use cases. So with that introduction, we're going to move on to creating a custom data product in Datasphere application. We'll switch to Datasphere application. Here I am. I'm going to access data sharing cockpit. And then you can see um, data products and creating a data provider profile and also publishing the data products, which are also called as listing the data product. In order to start creating a data product, you should have a data provider provi profile. So must have a data provi provider profile created and, and must be activated to prepare your data products inside the data provider. So I already have a data provider created and I already activated this data provider profile. So you can create a new data pro pro provider profile as well. The options are going to be self-explanatory. You can do um, uh, creation, like providing a business name and technical name and data category and industry and etc. Most of these options are going to be available to you when you're creating a data product as well. So I'm not going to create a new data provider profile Again, so I'm going to use my existing data provider profile for the creation of custom data products. If you wanted to see how my current data provider profile is being created, you can open that. You can see um, this is my provider profile name. You can also see I already have a couple of data products added to this profile. I'm going to add more as part of today's demonstration. Um, and some of the options that, that are prompted when you're creating a data provider profile are this, the application and data shipment 
um, options for provider profile and also um, whether it is going to be public or internal visibility and etc so with that uh, I'm okay with my data provider profile and the next step is to create a data product itself as I said I can create a data product for BW generated generated data sets and also the local tables that are integrated using custom data integration to the data sphere application so in this use case in this today's demonstration I'm going to show you how to create a custom data product on a local table that is already integrated as as a target object in data sphere so for that I'll switch to products or I can even go to the my data products from the data sharing cockpit and then I'm going to choose plus this is going to enable a, a, a visual to create a data product so these are the different tabs that are available that are you're going to uh, put, give inputs here and then your data product will be generated accordingly so I'm going to start filling this information for generating a data product the artifact space um, the business name technical name this is all the first overview information I'm going to quickly select the artifact space I'm going to get artifact from IT central space I'm going to give this as business name as customers and I, I I'm okay with having the same technical name I'm going to say customers data product and then I'll move on to the sample data this is optional you can provide a couple of data records on how the customer data product is going to look like by having a sample data um, I don't have a sample data to be uploaded but I can just prepare a couple of records and do an upload I'm skipping it uh, for this today's session and then product details you can choose the context I'm going to put, put this as public data marketplace because um, this is the option that I selected for my when I created my data provider profile so I'm going to get only the context of public data marketplace so if I enable my data provider profile to have other context and then I would I would see those ones as well in this case I, I won't and then data shipment I have selected all three possible data shipment categories so I can see all those three so you can say integrated delivery open SQL and external delivery external delivery is like files that you can prepare and integrated delivery is is part of your space installation data sphere so you can install this data product as part of a space um, in your data sphere application so I'm going to choose integrated integrated delivery and then delivery mode full time full full replication one time replication and live access uh, full replication will give you a schedule for your data updates for example you can do a weekly update a monthly or daily updates for your data products from the provider in this case that is going to be you if you wanted to keep that as one time you can say one time replication size category is like small I am going to put it very small data set and the size category I can say benchmarking data or company data depends on the type of your data you can keep that and then industry is going to be um, I will say depending on your industry you can keep it I'm going to say high tech um, that's going to be fine and then uh, application uh, it's optional again you can choose business technology platform um, that's going to be for analytics that's going to be okay and then regional coverage I can say North America you can just say Canada and US um, that's fine and I'm, I can give a product ID for this particular data product I can see PR uh, custom one something like that and then uh, I will move on to the pricing or actually product details is done so I'm going to move on to the pricing I don't want to keep any licensing for this one I wanted to keep it as free and then 
uh, if it is free and then free and uh, can, can be downloaded so something just uh, any instructions for the terms okay and then I will move on to the data documentation. I don't want to provide any data. If you wanted to, you can provide a documentation for your data product. I, I don't have any file that's going to be required here. And then I will choose to have product artifacts. Here, this is the most important thing where you wanted to provide the right artifact or required artifact for your data product. I'm going to say plus and then choose the objects that are part of my data sphere space. I, I can have all the objects that are um, enabled for external consumption. Uh, in this case, I'm going to put GV customer, and that is going to be my object that I wanted to expose this as a data product. I'm going to say select it. So I'm going to um, get all the columns of that particular data set, and then I'm, that's it. I have filled all the tabs, all the information, and then I'm going to save it. I'm going to say OK. My data product is being created and saved. I, I can check the workflow of the data product at the very top. Um, initially, it is going to be in a draft state. Um, then I'm going to put this or update this to or publish this as a listed so that everyone uh, can um, see and also install for their usage. So you can see the switch status. Um, I'm going to put this to, it's currently, it's a draft. I'm going to switch to this to a list. Do you want to change the data product status to listed? Yes. And once this is listed and everyone so who are accessing the public data marketplace, they can see it and they can install this data product. For example, if I wanted to ask, or if anyone else um, who is using uh, public data marketplace can see these data products. You can see my data product when you get a chance to access public marketplace. You can access the public marketplace from semantic onboarding here. And then the bottom you can see there are 1974 data products. You can choose to navigate to the data marketplace. And then you can apply the filters to, to reduce the number of uh, objects to, to be shown. In this case, I'm going to apply a filter on, on the type of access free so, so that I, I can re reduce the number of objects to be shown here. So you got to see a filter option on my um, display. So I'm going to apply a filter by clicking on this one. And you get options to choose by um, by the aggregator or type of your ap application and also license type or contract type. So I'm going to choose free so that I get 41 displayed. And you can see on request, this is also another type of on on demand request from a customer, uh, you can access these data products. Uh, most of them are on request. So you get a request made and then you will be a able to get access to it. So this is the free one. So I got at least 41. Uh, since mine is a free one, so I can, I can actually find my data product in this list. See, I have products and customers that are uh, published by my my provider, which is Sal Incorporation. So in this way, anybody uh, who's accessing public data marketplace can access my data products and then start installing in their application, start using the, this data, because currently there is no licensing agreement for these data products. Um, since it is my recently available data product that is available on the marketplace, so I can open it. Okay, instead of installing my own data product in my DataSphere application, I'm going to choose another one that is publicly available and then start installing that. So here, this is my data product because this is my data provider profile. So I'm going to choose somebody else. Uh, let's say this one. 
And as soon as I open this one, I, if it is free, as that is actually the free one, and access is open, I can start doing install. It is going to prompt you to choose where this data product has to be installed. I can choose my target space as um, one of the spaces that are available, um, then say install. And that's it. And anybody who wanted to install the data products from the marketplace, they can they can just go and install them depending on the access type that they have provided for the particular data product. So once it is installed, you can go back to the repository explorer and then uh, choose your space and then you can find that particular data product object installed on your, on your space. So here I'm going to choose central space because that's where I install and I'm going to find the corresponding objects that are just generated when I did the installation. And there um, it's called finance one. So I'm going to see, uh, it's going to be a remote table. So can I actually filter by remote table so that I don't have to display all of all these options. So I'm going to put this remote table selected. A new object generated just now on October 8th, which is today. So I'm going to just click on this one to see uh, the corresponding object. Yeah, okay, you can see this. This is what it, it generated, generated, and you can see the columns, and and of course you can also see the data if there if it is available as part of the data product generation by the provider. I did the data preview. And you can also see the data. It's been uh, added to the data product when it got generated by the provider. So, well, that's it. Um, so, to summarize, so we have seen um, creating a data product, custom data product in DataSphere application, and then list list them as a as part of public marketplace, so that somebody else can access and install it in the Datasphere application and start using it for for analytical or any other analysis purpose. Well, uh, that concludes today's session. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.